Hicks, also a well-known philanthropist, was discovered in his basement of his measly 12,000-square-foot home just outside of Toronto in a seated position, legs outstretched, with the right leg crossed neatly over his left, his back to his basement in-ground pool. <laughs> Pretty awesome. I think you're a billionaire. You can yeah, have it. It's just time. a lap pool. Yes. A couple laps in the morning. No big deal. He was wearing his glasses. He was perched un- his glasses were perched undisturbed on his nose. He had a kind of a had a bomber style jacket slightly pulled over his shoulder, his arms at his side, and beside him his wife, Honey, in a similar position, wearing a light coat, pulled over over her shoulders, her hands at her sides, both dead. When paramedics arrived, they suggested the couple had been dead for at least a day, if not more. Rigor, lividity, and other signs of early decomposition were obvious. The crime scene is set. So the paramedics must have arrived, deduced that these bodies are at least a day, if not more. Yeah, and so, like, oddly enough, too, um, they were actually found by the real estate agent. So I guess uh, Honey and uh, Barry had recently put their house up for sale. And this real estate agent had tried contacting them for a couple of days saying, hey, you know what? We have we have some buyers in town. They really want to look at your house. Um, we want to do a showing. Got no answer. Didn't think anything of it. Probably assumed that they were out of town and kind of, you know, like most houses that are for sale, there's a lockbox. Right. So, you know, helped herself to the lockbox, let the people in. And when they got down to the pool house. Well, they were lady, she was. Yeah, she was showing them around. Like they looked at the upstairs, like everything was a okay. They go down the spiral staircase. She's like, "Oh, you got listen. You got to see the pool. The, the pool is the it's the piece de la resistance of this house." She walks down the <laughs> you know the spiral stairs in the back uh, corner, and there's an adjacent underground garage there. You come in, you can come in through that way, and then there's a hallway down to the pool. And she notices there's some papers and stuff kind of scattered around, and she's like, "Oh, that's kind of weird." As she's looking at them, they're like real estate papers that she that Barry was supposed to print off and sign and send to her. And she's like, "Oh, okay, that's kind of weird." And there's some like a briefcase, so she just kind of picked it up and like put it on the <laughs> on the desk. Didn't think anything of it, right? She's Listen, like, "Oh, that's that's kind of weird." We're gonna get into it. This lady's a fucking pro. She like handled this, it. She well. puts those selling sunset chicks to shame. Like, <laughs> get, yeah, someone include this girl on a reality uh, literally. show. Like, so like Braden saying, she cleans up this, these documents and keeps going with the showing, gets to the pool, cracks the door, sees uh, Barry and, and Honey hanging from a, you know, a, from a railing in the pool, quickly shuts the door and is like, hey, you know what? Uh, the owners of the home are actually doing yoga in there right now. They need privacy. I'll show you guys out. You guys have seen the bulk of the house. And these these the couple that are looking at the house from uh, wealthy people from mainland China are like super offended because she's like, you need to get the fuck out of here. Like, showing's yeah. over. Anyways, you time know, like go. time to go. <laughs> so she plays it super cool. Then, okay, so apparently this entire time, the housekeeper is actually in the house. So she goes up to the housekeeper and is like, listen, you need to go downstairs right now and fucking check this shit out. So which is kind of fucked up that she forces this poor house cleaner to go down there yeah. and <laughs> find the bodies. But one of the most bizarre <laughs> things to me is immediately upon confirming that they were both deceased, obviously she calls 911, right? I'd be the yeah, first, right? you would think the first thought, get the cops, get the paramedics, get the coroner Wrong. down here, let's go. She calls she Honey's call? sister. It's her sister. That's a yeah. strange one because, I mean, maybe they're friends. Maybe they knew each other, right? Maybe they were close. So it's, it, maybe it's one of those things where it's like, it, it, you know they're dead. You, you know if you see that they're dead, they're dead. It. I don't I know. Mean, it's a weird one. I. You know what? You're 100 percent right though, because she, actually she was really close friends with Honey's sister, and that's why she got this gig. But, I mean, like, you would think that you're just lifelong in, intuition of when you see a dead body, like nine one one. And plus, the, the other bizarre thing too is it took her 90 minutes after discovering the bodies to call nine one one. And then the other thing that so what, leads me to believe, what, like, what did she do in that 90 she minutes? Called, called, uh, honey's sister, that type of shit. Got the people out, finished the fuck. Hey, listen, she wants to make the sale. <laughs> right. Yeah. So she's, she's, a, <laughs> she's a consummate pro man. You know, could you imagine the commission on whatever the fuck that house is selling for? hundred percent. $15 million house. 
what did you get three percent on the first hundred thousand and one and a half yeah. on the rest exactly. or something like it's a lot of money but so that like that was kind of bizarre to me that you know she calls the family first before calling you know and 911 because the call did come in like hey look at there there's people down here they might be dead because the paramedics did arrive on scene with full intentions to work the patients like when you call 911 and you get a report like the described scene that right away comes in and be like hey listen it's probably an obvious death well and if you right? and, and like I did, let's just point mm. out really quickly too when you when I think everyone when I pictured this Andrew when you pictured this you picture them like hanging from a railing into a pool, like some, well, like they're hanging. So how like, else would I you just, hang somebody off of a railing into a pool? Like that d- doesn't a, make sense. Other ways, obviously the pool is drained and they're dangling into the pool, right? Yeah. I have a, I have a picture of the pool here. I think I can pull up here. Yeah. So that's the pool railing, right. That they were hanging off of. And then there's an artist rendition of like how they were found. And it's like this. Which is not at all how anyone reading that description would see how, like, picture them being hung in your head. Well, well, that's a, that's what that's a that's a handrail around a pool. So what? It's a three foot handrail. Yeah, like they're not in, they're not hanging into the pool. They're hanging on the fucking. Uh, they're on the pool on the deck. deck with their back back to the pool. It yeah, when you when you think like hanging, yeah, you would think like hanging into the pool. That pool, yeah, into the pool. The pool was empty or something, and or whatever like it just yeah it's suspicious it's just sitting there bizarre. both of them both of them seated like yeah, that super bizarre it doesn't make it, when you see it you're like well that's suspicious well and one of the big things that you hear from like the first responders uh the the real estate agent that found them it just seemed like it seemed staged it seemed odd like people described well, it as like some type of like halloween theme like just spooky looking off-putting fucking i don't know how to describe like they're wearing their clothes clothes of the day kind of like their jackets thrown over their shoulder there's no blood there's nobody no real signs of struggle like it's just kind of looks like tiny may have been hit in the face which is interesting yeah they'd say trauma on her face it's an interesting it's super interesting that you bring that up i don't want to jump around too much i don't want to screw you up but do you say like so honey did have some trauma to the side of her face but the interesting thing about this she had abrasions but there was no bruising around the uh, the abrasions, right? Which leads you to believe that this was either like perimortem or postmortem uh, trauma, right? Because if if she was alive, there would be swelling. Should be there would be blood flow to that area. There was no swelling, right? Hmm. Yeah, your body naturally tries to get blood to that area if it gets hit or cut or. Well, right? and then so. and then just to there, from one of the things I read, and and you know this may be wrong, but like it had looked like their jackets, like you know when you kind of. You can like almost handcuff yourself by pulling off your jacket and then leaving it on, right? Like if you leave it on your hands and then pull it down to your waist, you can kind of every sit like, fucking time I take my kid's jacket off, it's a fucking yeah. strap. Like that. It's awful. <laughs> so that's how their jackets were. Both of their jackets, almost like their jackets were, you know, like they pulled drugged down them by their jacket. Yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. So. Not you saying know, that I dragged my kid by his jacket or anybody. Yeah, else, but, you know. Never. but I mean, like they were, you know, it's Barry was totally fine. No, no issues with his face. And they were at the time of their death, 75, uh, Barry was 75 and honey was 70. Right. So, yeah, they're, they're elderly people from all accounts. They are not super athletic. They didn't really keep themselves in good shape. Um, I mean, but they and, must yeah. have been taking so, the most like premium grade generic pharmaceuticals to be yeah. at the p- p- They had health. premium grade <laughs> generic. Uh, they had Vicodin. Yeah. They had all the good stuff. So yeah. they, they, PC they had a whole supply at their fingertips. Yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> so where does that leave us out? Like, yeah. so we have the the paramedics arrived, called it on scene. They're both DOA, and then so let's yep. like maybe let's get into the the Toronto Police Services investigation. Well, yeah, originally the deaths are treated as suspicious, obviously, you would think, by the Toronto Absolutely. Police Service oh, Homicide Squad. Like three feet? <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Both yeah, of them. Like, it's not like uh, two people seemingly hung by kneeling or sitting. <laughs> suspicious, to yeah. say the least. Uh, so they originally said cause of both deaths were 
ligature neck compression, which I guess is just another term for strangulation. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And then something else to, to add to that is super weird is both are higher. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.